Well, good to see you all again. Uh, today, we're going to be covering the 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and the gospel is from Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 31. So this is a fairly long section, a uh, fairly long gospel, but it breaks down basically into three parts. Uh, the first part is Jesus saying um, about greed or against greed. Uh, the second is the parable of the rich fool, and then the third is uh, Jesus talking about dependence on God. So in the first section, which is verses 13 to 15, someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbiter? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. And he's saying two things here. First of all, he's saying that, look, uh, you're in a dispute over this inheritance, and obviously it's very important to you, but I'm not going to be involved in that. That's not why I'm here. What I'm going to do is give you guidance for your life and guidance for the way you should live your life if you want to be a disciple. And basically, he's talking about the fact that while possessions, and we all need them, uh, we should not make them the focus and we should not make them the center of our lives. And certainly, we should not allow that to deteriorate into a state where we end up just being greedy and the possessions are the most important thing that there is. So in the next section, he fleshes that out. And he says, Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What should I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus it will be for the one who stores up treasures for himself, but is not rich in what matters to God. Well, today we would talk about the harvest and associate that with money and other possessions that we might have. Now, you know, everybody gets a little twitchy or nervous when, uh, you know, you read some of these things and all of a sudden somehow money is bad, all right? Well, money's not bad because money is created by God, all right? Um, in fact, it's created by God's logos, who is the Son. And in the creed, we say, through him all things were made. Well, that certainly would include money, all right? So therefore, money is from God and he gave it to us for our use, so it's not money that's the issue here. It is our attitude toward it. Are we actively detached from it? Now that's kind of an odd saying, but actively detached. And that's a very important attitude to have, not only towards money, but to, towards most things, um, obviously, except for our faith. Meaning, would we by faith trust God to provide for us what we need. So if we have money, that's great. And if we don't have money, that's fine too, because by faith we believe that God will take care of us. And that's a leap of faith that is very difficult, and I think most of us probably fall in and out of a good situation with that faith, but we'll talk about that a little later. I want to read something to you, and I think this is a very powerful reminder 
of God's care for us. And this is from the letter to the Hebrews, and it's out of chapter 13, and it's verses 5 and 6. Let your life be free from love of money, but be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never forsake you or abandon you. Thus we may say with confidence, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Now there's a very, well, there's a couple of big lines in here, but the one, I will never forsake you or abandon you. That is actually from the Old Testament, from the uh, book of Joshua. And it is God's messenger says that to Joshua as Joshua is ready to go into the promised land, cross the Jordan and go into the promised land and go up against huge numbers of people uh, that live there already. And he is, God is giving him this promise that he will never forsake him or abandon him if in fact he goes through and does his will. Well, the same is true for us. The same is absolutely true for us. And I absolutely love this part. And I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? So let's read on. In verse 19, he says, and I shall say to myself, now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. Well, this is a trap that we can all fall into. And it's dependent upon ourselves. Dependence upon ourselves instead of dependence on God which is really what he wants from each of us, is dependence on him for everything in our lives. Um, Francis was supposed to have said, uh, the only thing that I have of my own is my sin. All else is gift from God. And I think that, you know, uh, I'll just speak for myself here. Uh, when things are really, really going well, you know, just kind of easier to be dependent upon myself. But when things start to go south and there's struggle and there's suffering and all the other things, lo and behold, my prayer life picks up and I somehow magically become more and more dependent on God. Well, you know, God would like us to be that way all the time. Um, sometimes I think, uh, you, you know, that level of closeness, when we get that close to God, Maybe it just wears us down a little bit. Um, but the point is that God would want to provide everything for us and have us be totally dependent on him in a right relationship with each other. Verse 20 illustrates the old adage, you can't take it with you. But God said to him, you fool, this night your life will be demanded of you and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? And so all this stuff that we might have accumulated is going to be left to somebody else. Hopefully it's somebody that uh, you wanted it left to and that uh, will put it to good use. But, you know, that's not necessarily true. And at that point, you wouldn't have control over that anyway. But the crux of this whole section is really in verse 21, which tells us that what matters is not our net worth, but what worth do we put on being God's people? And 21 says, thus will it be for the one who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich in what matters to God. So are we rich in the matters of God or are we rich in our possessions? And certainly that's a decision that each and every one of us needs to make. The next section is dependence on God. He said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life and what you will eat or about your body and what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Notice the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, yet God feeds them. How much more important are you than birds? 
Can you, by worrying, add a moment to your lifespan? If even the smallest things are beyond your control, why are you anxious about the rest? Notice how the flowers grow. They do not toil or spin. But I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass in the field that grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O you of little faith? As for you, do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not worry anymore. All the nations of the world seek for these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these other things will be given you besides. One of the hardest things, kind of right up there with forgiveness, is not to worry and not to be anxious. With all the expectations of the world puts on what is a good life, it's very difficult actually not to worry or to be anxious. But Jesus is clear that God is in control of our lives. But verse 28, quite frankly, just kind of cuts me to the core every time I read it. Verse 28 says, If God so clothes the grass of the field that grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O you of little faith? And I wonder sometimes why it is that I read that, that verse and it just bites me because, quite frankly, or bites into me, because, quite frankly, you know, when times are going pretty good, as I said earlier, faith is easy. But when we've experienced the loss of a job or a lack of financial security, then we kind of find out what the real state of our faith is. And I think that one of the things that, that we come to realize is that, and in verse 29, he says, As for you, do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not worry anymore. Well, you know, no matter what, God knows our situation. And he wants us to know that he's going to provide for us. And so, you know, over a period of time, we need to come to that place where we really do expect and accept the fact that that's what he's going to do and that's what he's been doing all along. And I actually think that the more you experience God being faithful to his promises and trustworthy in everything, the stronger our faith becomes. Verse 31 really gives us a solution to overcome our worries and our anxiety. Instead, seek his kingdom and these other things will be given you besides. So his kingdom, that's an interesting thing. His kingdom is where everything is subject to God's will. The members of the kingdom are children of God. And even in this life, enjoy that eternal life that is to come. It makes it possible to stand on what St. Paul tells us in the letter to the Romans. We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. We know that all things work for good, not some things, not most things, not a lot of things, all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And as we look back on our lives and we live this out, we can stand on that every time. God bless you.